Windows 10 loses support on October 14th, 2025. And according to my comment section, a lot of you have absolutely no intention on switching to Windows 11. So in that case, today we're going to talk about what you should do to Windows 10 to prepare yourself for end of support. Stay tuned. So on October 14th, 2025, is your computer going to self-destruct like the tape in Mission Impossible? No, it's not. In fact, it's highly likely nothing will happen in the short term. Just like when Windows 7 lost support, there were no serious vulnerabilities for quite some time. Of course, there are many today, and in a few years, there are going to be many for Windows 10 as well. But in the short term, it's very unlikely that we're going to see any major security problems with Windows 10. So today, I'm going to show you some of the precautions you should take today to prepare yourself for when Windows 10 ultimately does lose support. But first, I got to pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office 2. Now, on with the video. So, as a disclaimer, if you've watched many of my videos on my channel, then you probably already know that I highly recommend against running Windows 10 after support ends in October. This is because one of the most important aspects of computer security is running up-to-date software. That's why I recommend not running Windows 10 after end of life, but with that said, the libertarian in me doesn't like being told what to do either. So, for those people who are going to continue to run Windows 10, regardless of my advice, I want to give you some pointers on how you can remain as safe as possible once support ends on Windows 10. So with that said, what we should start out with is making sure you can fix your Windows 10 system after the October deadline. Because there's a really good chance, and by really good chance, I mean this is definitely going to happen. Microsoft is going to remove access to the Windows 10 ISO once it reaches end of life. So if you want a copy of the official Windows 10 ISO from Microsoft and not one from some dodgy website, it's a really good idea to grab one now while it's still available. So we're going to go ahead and jump on the system real quick and do that, but stay tuned because there's a lot more advanced stuff coming up. Let's do this. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start out with making a USB boot drive for Windows 10. Now make sure you have a USB drive with at least eight gigabytes of free space on it. And then something you can store away in your drawer because you're probably gonna need this at some point later. Once we create this though, I'm gonna go through and show you how to harden the security in Windows 10 to make it a little bit more impenetrable once you lose updates. So the first thing we wanna start with is go ahead and throw our USB drive into our USB port. And this one here is already a, U a Windows 10 USB drive, but I'm gonna go ahead and recreate this just to show you how. And I'm personally using a 32 gig thumb drive because that's the only one I had available for this video. But anything eight gigs and higher is gonna work just fine. So we can go ahead and close this. I'm gonna launch Chrome here. And as you can see, we're on Microsoft's website. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to this down in the description below. But what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to go right here where it says create Windows 10 installation media. So we're going to download that right here. This is the media creation tool. And we can go ahead and open that up just by hitting yes. And it goes through the process here of helping us create a USB drive. And once this starts, we can go ahead and close everything else. And from right here, we're going to go ahead and hit accept to the license agreement. You're going to wait a minute while it's getting a few things ready. There's a lot of waiting on this right here, but the nice thing is, is all you got to do is hit next. 
Now on this one right here, we don't wanna upgrade this PC now. All this would do is an in-place upgrade. That's not what we're looking to do. We wanna create the install media on a USB drive. So we're gonna go ahead and click that and hit next. We're gonna go ahead and leave the recommended settings. This is essentially auto-detected based on the version of Windows that we're currently running. So all of that is fine. We can go ahead and hit next. And then we want ours to be a USB flash drive. You can create an ISO file if you want. If you wanna have an ISO file on like a Ventoy CD or something like that, then you can use the ISO file option and it will just create you an ISO file. But on this one, I wanna go ahead and use a USB drive. But keep in mind, if you create an ISO file, you can also use a program like Rufus to make a USB drive later. But I want to make a USB drive primarily because I want it to be off of this computer. I don't want to store an ISO on this computer because if the hard drive fails, then I don't have the ISO in order to reinstall it. So for this, I want to go ahead and make a USB drive so I can keep it in a drawer somewhere so I can keep it off the system itself. So we're going to do that. We're going to hit next. We're gonna choose the USB that we want, which is our D drive, the one we just put in. Hit next. And at this point, it's gonna download and install the Windows 10 installation files onto the USB drive. But it's gonna take a while to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead until we're to the next step of this wizard. Okay, so here we go. Our USB drive has been created. We can go ahead and hit finish now. And it's gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit before it's done. And we can double check on it by going to this PC and clicking on the USB drive. And as you can see, all of our setup files are there. Now, this might seem like a no-brainer, but to be honest with you, it wasn't the first thing on my list when I sat down to write this video. Once I thought of it though, I was like, well, duh. It's really important to have a USB drive created with a copy of Windows 10 on it so you can use it to do repair installs or in-place upgrades, which are essentially just repair installs, or even reinstall the entire operating system if something were to happen to it. If you don't have the USB created prior to Microsoft pulling the Windows 10 media creation tool, then your only option is going to be trying to find copies of the Windows 10 ISO from dodgy sources. Now, I'm not even saying that those sources are bad, but there's really no way of knowing. And at least if you get the media creation tool and create the USB now, you'll have confidence in knowing that the USB drive you created is safe. Now, with that said, once Windows 10 loses support, you're going to have to rely on other ways to secure Windows when vulnerabilities are inevitably discovered. Since you won't be relying on security updates, you're going to have to put more reliance on your antivirus. Luckily, Microsoft has already said that they will continue to provide definitions for Windows Defender until October of 2028. Now, if you're not using Defender, you're going to have to find out if the antivirus you're using will continue to support Windows 10. If it's unknown or it isn't, then it's best to uninstall it and use Windows Defender instead. And with that said, there are some tweaks that we can make with Windows Defender that can make it even more secure. So let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so to do that, all we're gonna do is go down here and jump onto Windows Security. And from Windows Security, there's a couple settings that we need to change here. So go ahead and click on Virus and Threat Protection, and you wanna click on Manage Settings right here. And then scroll all the way down to where it says Tamper Protection. And make sure this is turned on. For whatever reason, it could possibly be turned off. And if it is, go ahead and turn it back on. What this does is it stops malicious software from being able to disable Windows Defender. And then from here, we wanna go back and then we want to scroll down to right at the bottom here where it says ransomware protection. Go ahead and click on this link and flip this on right here. And what this should do is it should protect specific folders from unauthorized changes. And those folders are going to be right here in this link that says protected folders. If you click on that, it'll go ahead and give you all the folders that it's going to be protecting. And as you can see, it's going to be documents, pictures, videos, music, and favorites. If you want, you can throw your desktop folder in here. You can throw a lot of different folders in here that aren't already in here just by clicking the button to say, add a protected folder. And then from here, we can go ahead and close Windows Security. And we're going to jump into control panel here just by typing control panel on the start menu and launching it just like that. And then from here, we want to go ahead and click on system and security. And then we want to click on 
Windows Defender Firewall right here. And then from here, go ahead and click on Advanced Settings. And there, we're looking for this link right here that says Windows Defender Firewall Properties. And then from here, we what we're concerned with is domain, private, and public profiles. And we wanna make sure that inbound connections are set to block for all three of those right there. And once you do that, you can go ahead and hit OK, and you can go ahead and close these things right here. Now, I've heard kind of mixed opinions on whether or not Windows Defender will continue to receive definitions. Ultimately, I'm about 98% sure that definitions will continue until 2028. However, some sources claim that Microsoft will not be updating definitions for Windows 10, but those same sources claim that Microsoft will be sending out security intelligence updates. And security intelligence updates are simply Microsoft's fancy way of saying virus definitions. So according to Microsoft, they will continue to send out security intelligence updates or virus definitions for Windows Defender until October of 2028. Also, Windows Defender has recently been updated to leverage AI-driven threat detection to identify patterns in malicious activities. So this should help to protect your PC even if you're not receiving security updates for Windows 10. So moving along though, there's also some Windows features that we can disable that are common vectors for attacks. In fact, ironically, these are the features that are typically the ones being patched with the security updates that you will no longer be receiving. But if you don't use them, then it's probably a good idea just to shut them off. Let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and launch Control Panel again. And from within Control Panel, we wanna click on our Add and Remove Programs link and then we wanna click right here where it says Turn Windows Features on or off. And then from here, we wanna scroll down. The first feature we're gonna be disabling is right here where it says SMB 1.0. Now this is the original SMB protocol for Windows and it's extremely outdated. Most software doesn't use it anymore. And in fact, it's normally disabled by default on Windows 10. This was like the Windows file sharing from the Windows XP era. It's been obsolete for a really long time, but there are some reasons why some people might have it turned on, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then also you wanna make sure that the Telnet client as well as TFTP client are also turned off. And once you do that, you can go ahead and hit OK. It's gonna go through and it's gonna configure Windows. It's gonna want you to restart. Now I'm not gonna restart because I'm currently screen recording, but you can go ahead and restart your PC at that point. And then the next thing, we're gonna go ahead and jump back into control panels. We're gonna click on system and security. And then we wanna go into the system section. Now if you just click on that straight, it's just gonna open the new Windows settings. And that's not what we want. We wanna right click and hit open so we can get to the old traditional system system properties for Windows 10. And then from here, we wanna click over on the side right here where it says remote settings. Go ahead and click on that. And this is your remote desktop protocol or your remote desktop settings right here. And a lot of people have these turned on so they can remote into a computer from somewhere else. But I would highly recommend turning that off if Windows 10 isn't being updated anymore. And you can also uncheck the allow remote assistant connections to this computer. By turning both of these off, then go ahead and hit okay. It should completely disable the remote desktop protocol. And then from here, we're gonna close that and we're gonna launch our reg edit here. Go ahead and say yes to the user account control. And we wanna go into local machine, software. And then from software, we wanna scroll down to Microsoft. And then we wanna go into Windows. So we're gonna scroll down. This is all alphabetical. So just scroll down into the W's. There's Windows right there. And then we're gonna go into current version. And then we're gonna go into policies right here. And then we're gonna go into Explorer. And then we're gonna right click, hit new, D word, 32 bit value. And the name of this is gonna be no auto run, go ahead and type that exactly how I have it on the screen here and hit enter. And then we wanna open that and change the value from zero to one. And what this does is it disables the auto run when you put a USB drive or CD into the computer. So if somebody was to have a USB drive with some kind of malware on it, it wouldn't really matter because it's not gonna auto run anyway. Now, obviously with some of these features, if you use them, it might not be a great idea to turn them off, but you have to weigh whether or not it's worth using these features if they can become a liability later on. 
For instance, the SMB 1.0 that we talked about before is typically disabled by default on Windows 10. However, if you have an old printer that scans to SMB, it's probably using the 1.0 protocol. So you'll have to decide whether or not it's worth being a little less secure in order to use your scanner, or at least to use the SMB feature within your scanner. Also, remember that SMB 1.0, the protocol itself, hasn't been updated in years. That's one of the reasons that it comes disabled by default. But with that said, lots of security issues from within Windows are because of exploits making use of scripting languages within Windows. So it might be a good idea to turn those scripting languages off so that even if a vulnerability was present, the scripting language wouldn't be available to exploit it in the first place. So let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to disable them. Okay, so while we're still here in the registry, we want to go ahead and scroll back up to Microsoft here. So we're going to go into, I think we're actually there, and we want to scroll down into the Windows script host right here, and then go ahead and go into settings. And then from here, we want to right click, hit new, D word, 32-bit value, and then for the value, it's just going to be Enabled, go ahead and hit enter. And we wanna make sure to open this and verify that it is zero. And what this will do is it will disable the Windows script host. And then from there, go ahead and close reg edit. But we do now need to open up PowerShell and go ahead and launch this as administrator here. And then what we're gonna type is set execution policy all signed and go ahead and hit enter. Hit Y for yes. And what this will do is it will make sure that any PowerShell script has to be signed in order for it to run. If it's not signed, it won't run. So this will give you kind of a little bit of added protection. What you could do is you could just disable execution completely. And But I think this is more of a middle ground because if a, if a script is signed, then it's probably not malicious. Now, there are several other things that you can do from within Windows 10 to make it more secure. For instance, make sure that the actual software that you're running in Windows 10 is updated. <laughs> like running an outdated version of Java, for instance, probably isn't a great idea if you're also running an operating system that no longer receives security updates. Also, many Windows 10 systems have obsolete programs like Adobe Flash Player. If your system still has Flash installed, then it would be a really good idea to uninstall that, being that it went obsolete back in, what, 2020? Also, Windows 10 has the ability to take advantage of some of the more modern security features that Windows 11 has available to it. For instance, you can convert an MBR install of Windows 10 to UEFI, so you can take advantage of Secure Boot, as long as your motherboard itself supports booting to UEFI. But if I missed anything, which I probably did, go ahead and mention it down in the comments below so we can kind of get these Windows 10 systems as secure as possible. But ultimately, my recommendation is still just to upgrade Windows 10 to an operating system that still receives security updates, whether that be Windows 11 or even Windows 10 LTSC. We can do all the tweaks we want on Windows 10 and try to make it secure. And if you follow these recommendations, you have a better chance of not being exploited. But ultimately, your system is never going to be as secure as an operating system that is receiving updates. Also, everything we did today is temporary. Eventually, Windows 10 will be so far out of support that it's just not worth it anymore. Kind of like Windows 7 is today. But if you decide that you just want to check out some of these other alternatives, then you can check out this video here for upgrading Windows 10 to LTSC. And you can also check out this video here and just upgrade to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. But as always, you guys have a great day.